Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight on the Arts, the show brought to you by the Chicopee Cultural Council and Chicopee TV. My name is Johnny Miranda, your host for the evening, and today we have an amazing show. We will meet Frankie Borrero, an artist that has broken obstacles to inspire a generation. <laughs> And here we are with Frankie Borrero, one of our staples in the Western Mass region. Frankie comes to us from Springfield, Mass, and he is an amazing artist, and I'm excited to have him on the show. Thank you for being with us, Frankie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Frankie, to me, it's so important to have you not just because you are a local artist, but you're also a Puerto Rican artist, a Hispanic artist. You're doing your thing in the region. And you, uh, to, for, for me and to many other artists, you have been uh, an inspiration, um, awesome. you know, with all, all, all the things that represent who you are, what you're doing. Um, and I want you to, I, I want the community of Chicopee to know who Frankie is. So mm -hmm. what would you, how would you uh, define yourself? What would you okay. tell our community about Frankie? Uh, well, it's funny because it, my life took a very wild turn. Um, I've been in pediatric dentistry for years before my brain injury. I had a brain injury in 2015. Okay. And, um, but my whole career, my adult career has been in dentistry. I was a team leader for and a trainer for 133 offices. So I spent a lot of tra I did a lot of traveling, um, but that got abruptly stopped June 10th, 2015. I was auditing offices in Sp Springfield and Holyoke. Springfield being my last stop, and that day I rode a bicycle, ironically for exercise. And I was, I guess I was hit from behind. Um, a car hit me. I never saw what happened. I was in a coma for a while. And um, it, it's, God took the snow globe, shook it up for me. And after that, I mean, Wednesday is what I can remember. It was sunny out that day. That's it. A month later, I'm learning how to walk and talk again. And um, one of the things, the brain is so powerful and so mysterious because you, I, when I came out of the coma, I remembered I have to finish a portrait, but I didn't know how to walk. And you're literally putting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do that. It's it's the strangest thing because. But you were remembering that you had a portrait to finish. Yeah, and um, it, the different components of the brain is what happens. Mm -hmm. So I can remember things from ten years ago, twelve digit codes from ten years ago, but I can't tell you if I ate this morning. So it's a hot mess. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things I like to tell people, it's one thing to have strength you need strength um and survival skills but i think the what got me where i am today is resilience the ability to adapt to a situation yeah. because i can be as strong as i want but i need to be able to adapt to this new situation definitely and that's what happened um a month later I was learning how to walk, talk again, and don't burn bridges because all of my employees came to visit me. To It was such a, I was so grateful and family. I had a lot of love. That, that helps too. Good and support. that put me back, support, put me on track. Were you painting prior to your brain injury? Yeah, um, um, but... It was more of a, 
I'll do this portrait for this doctor, the commission pieces. Commission pieces, yeah. okay. And I would do them once a year because I was so into my work. work yeah. um, so I would do it once a year. But this is where the um, ability to adapt comes in. Mm -hmm. um, I was disabled after the brain injury. Well, what am I going to do about it? And that's when I started drawing more, creating more. That area of your life took off. Yes. And what I did was I tied it into therapy. Nice. So I'm not going insane in bed when that was happening. I was just creating more work and more work. And um, it de I developed neuroplasticity where you excel. You lose some components. Mm -hmm. And I excelled in other, other areas. Mm -hmm. Um, I lost sense of taste and seizures. I get a lot of seizures, but I'm also creating a lot of work and meeting a lot of people, networking in Western Mass. And the perspective of your paintings, your, your painting style is very unique. I can, you know, there are a few artists that I can see their work without it being signed, and I know this work belongs to this artist. And you're one of those artists where I can see your work and I know that's a Frankie Borrero painting, <laughs> you know, and that is the level of uniqueness that is great for an artist to achieve. Um, what do you feel is uh, the most recurring theme in your paintings or, or do, if, if you have a recurring theme or what do you feel motivates you to sit and and paint a particular piece? Is it arbitrary? Do you let the muse just inspire you randomly? Or do you plan what you're going to paint and how? It's, it's a muse, um, what comes to me for the moment. Mm -hmm. And for example, if you, Let's this, talk about this, this yeah. drawing here, I had come out of the brain injury. So, which I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed mm -hmm. to be in a coma and um, from that point downhill. But I got out of it. So I was always getting tested. Mm -hmm. And that's where you see me. I was so tired of being tested like a lab rat. So I was ripping my head open there, exposing my brain down here. Mm -hmm. And down the bottom part, I had a pit stop crew working on my brain to get it back on track. That's why I did the track the in track, the back. Yeah. While I watch everything from above. The top part is my denial. When I first came out of the injury and they was told I was disabled, I was in a heavy denial. Yeah. So that's why I did the construction workers on my face is still a work in progress, which is acceptance yeah. of what has happened to me. So that was a work in progress, was it, accepted. This is a beautiful piece, and I love that you are able to recreate with images what you're going through. Uh, that's yeah. an impressive achievement um, for many artists, right? To be able to tell a story with their painting and, and to be able to translate that into image. Uh, mm. That's admirable. I really like this piece. When did you start working on this piece? Um, within a month after when I got home. Really? Yeah. Wow. Within a month. I wanted to show, a lot of my pieces are like this, where it tells a story without explaining anything. Yeah. So you see and you wonder more or less what was going on. And in this situation, I've had heart surgery. So when you have a heart attack, a heart surgery, they fix your heart, you're done. Mm -hmm. Brain injury is completely different. It's a whole universe when they have no explanations. Even neurologists, top neurologists will have no explanations for certain things. So it's frustrating to say, why am I like this? And well, we don't have an answer to those kind of things. So what I do is I turn to that and yeah. express it that's that's impressive visually that's impressive and i had an opportunity to work uh 
side by side with you a few years ago when we were working at the uh, Black Lives Matter paintings that we were working for an auction. Uh, and we painted during the Black Lives mural that was done on the on the ground in um, in Springfield in yeah. front of from City Hall. So that's that's that was the first time a few years ago that I had come across Frankie Borrero. And then I, you know, add you on Facebook and I start learning more about you and seeing your work. And um, it's great for artists to to encounter each other and network with each other because that moment in time is what brought us here today, yeah. you know, at some point. And you have definitely been of inspiration to many others. I think that a lot of the artists from Springfield and Western Mass that I speak to uh, have great ref reverence for you as an artist and, and, and the barriers that you've been able to break. Uh, you're also a muralist. Yes. You've done a few murals. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, my first one, and this is why I tell people, always be vigilant. Um, pay attention to your surroundings. Don't just wait for opportunity to come to you. One thing is you can be as good as you want with the art, but if you're not doing anything to get out there, mm -hmm. then, I mean, you might as well be singing in a shower. <laughs> you right. know, I mean, right. that's not... Um, and when I moved to Springfield in 2019, I saw a flyer on the wall. They said, you know, art opportunity for Fresh Paint Springfield. And that's when our marriage started with the Springfield Cultural Center because I took that flyer and I said, well, I draw. Okay, we'll do this. I followed it. Not only did I follow it, I learned from professional muralists because mm -hmm. I wasn't a muralist. Mm -hmm. um, but I was very curious about it. And I worked with Fresh Paint Springfield, learn from them, ask them a zillion questions. As an artist, you always ask questions. You always want to know. You don't know everything. Mm -hmm. So um, that project, we started Dwight Street. There was 10 different murals, Dr. Yeah. Seuss, Dwight Street. There were several others. And um, after that, I was given the, uh, the mural for Dwight Street I participated in. But I was given my first mural in Holyoke. I want to say Hamilton and uh, Nueva Esperanza. Mm -hmm. That mural. And that one mural had to be Puerto Rico themed. That's why you see so many Puerto Ricans on it. And it's funny because that was all by myself from start to finish. Nice. And they were seven panels. I, when I first saw the panels, I said, There's, how am I going to do Overwhelming. this? Overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. It, but it had to be done. I yeah. was already under contract, and I had a window of five weeks. So I accept these things, and then I worry about how am I going to do, gonna do it? <laughs> you right. know? But you don't just turn it down yeah. because you don't know how to do it. You figure it out. And um, <clears throat> so in those five weeks, I was able to start the mural and complete the mural. Nice. And that was nice. But I swear, it seemed like it rained every day. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I, I, I've been there, been there. So I know. It's like <laughs> every day. And um, being on an Uber and on the bus, I didn't have a car back then. So the traveling back and forth but I was obsessive with those five weeks. Yeah. I did not want to have the excuse of, or anything to say, oh, I wish I would have finished it then, yeah. a week ago. It should have been done, blah, you know, I, it, it's gonna get done in five weeks. There's an element in your, in your work that um, uh, is also a social component, even when you're not necessarily, even when an artist isn't necessarily trying to protest something or to bring a message to something in particular, their work in itself is of a social nature. Um, for example, I, I know that one of the works that you've been working on is a series of uh, characters from El Chavo del Ocho. Chavo, yeah. Right? Okay. And, um, and I see that and, and, and perhaps to some people, they may see just an illustration of the characters. 
Mm. But I see so much more than that. Maybe as an artist myself, but I, I see the nostalgia of a childhood. I see the remembrance of a Hispanic community that no matter what nationality you were from, were brought together every morning to watch these characters that are part of our culture, that are part of our history. And it's a Mexican show, but... It's it also, it, it, it was in every Latin American country every morning. And that is a show that brought us together. So, you know, perhaps an artist did, doesn't have the intention to bring about that message, but that's what I see when I see your paintings. Mm. Tell us a little bit about that experience painting those characters. The Chavo experience, and um, this is another example of why it's important to take a bad situation and flip it around because there's always something come out of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I broke my leg and I was supposed to be home recovering. So I said, okay, as opposed to just being in bed all day, I'm going to start this series, this Chavo series. Um, because I, that, that's a staple. It's almost like yes. there's no way you can not have seen <laughs> it at some point in yeah. your life. And no matter what country, um, Latin American country. But what I did there, I wanted to capture their character individually. Um, for example, I did it in black and white, not in color. Mm -hmm. Black and white gave it more drama. It gives it more drama. So if you look at the picture, it's more intense. Yeah. And I wanted to isolate their particular character to the to the piece. So, for example, I had Chilindrina yeah. um, with her goofy self. But I wanted to show that these were characters, but they were people, too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I did it more intently with black and white. I was so fixed on that to highlight them. And I do that with portraits when I do, because I'm not a fan of hyper realism. I appreciate the art, don't yeah, get yeah, me of wrong, course. and digital art. But at the same time, when someone says I want the exact, you know, this to look exact, I tell them, well, you can go to Staples. Yeah. You can go here, and they'll they'll print it for you. It'll look exactly alike. Yeah. You know, um, but. I need to capture that person. So when I'm doing a portrait, how is this person like? Mm -hmm. And capture a moment, not just draw a picture of the person, but yeah. capture a moment in that picture. And what I think they that's what thinking. gives you your style too. Yeah. When you see your paintings, you see that recreation of realness in, in an abstract style that yes, characterizes you. Style. Um, which is amazing, and 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 yeah, I love that series. When I when I was, I've, I've been watching you as you're creating the pieces on Facebook, and it definitely has has brought that that nostalgia of a childhood in me. And I think that's what art is supposed to do. When you see an image, and it creates a, a reaction in you, whether it's a good reaction or a repulsive reaction, its artist has achieved its purpose. Yeah. by creating and generating that type of reaction in the audience. So I appreciate you for that and for bringing those memories back to me. You also have this painting behind you, and I know that you mentioned that you have not uh, finished it, but this is incredibly awesome that you're bringing us a work in progress um, so that people can see what it's like in the mind of Frankie. Tell us a little bit about this. This one here, a lot was going on. I actually started this in 2020. Okay. And you know, that was the year that everything happened. Protests. Protests yes. all over the place. <laughs> there was protests, there was COVID, there was so many things going on. Um, and a lot of social injustice. Yes. And that's where I put her with the scale and I wanted to show unity, not just highlight bad. Okay, we get it. The world is, it has all this going on. What are we gonna do about it? 
Yeah. And that's why I had the hands clasping. Yeah. But at the same time, I did a stage here. Mm -hmm. And I followed the quote of Shakespeare, all the world is a stage. stage. And it is. We're really performing for the world. And at that time, I felt like we were performing because we were always on the news. Right. No matter what, whether we were maskers, not maskers, vaxxers, not vaxxers, um, pro this, pro that. And we had, that's where all the cameras come in. Yeah. So we were just acting out while the world is watching. Right. And that's where the cell phones and things like that um, are there. So they can watch us perform. Right and either make fools of ourselves, get inspired. <laughs> or deliver a message. You know, yeah. deliver a message. And what I noticed that I thought was good for me personally was in the middle of this picture, I had nothing to protest about. It, I couldn't find something that bothered me enough yeah. To put up there on a sign. I know there's a lot to protest, but I wanted to grab something that's bothering me enough. Yeah. And um, it's, that's still a work in progress. Yeah. So the fact that I'm searching yeah. for that is a great thing. Yes, and I think that because, because you, in particular, have experienced all the things that you have experienced like you were mentioning earlier you weren't supposed to be alive no you know you 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 view life and appreciate life in a different way or at a different level so it's it's hard when you have been been given a second chance at life to find things to be upset about because your gratitude towards life is so immense that it's hard. Right, uh, on the flip side to that, when I think about it, my family was looking for where to bury me. What would be the proper burial place? Wow. Um, and who's gonna take care of me being blind and in a wheelchair? Those were my prognosis. And they were so grim that they had to have a family meeting and decide where to bury me and that sort of thing. And wouldn't you know it, hours later, I started coming out of it. Wow. In a haze and um, a, uh, that I remember, it was a big fog and a lot of people around. So you just... That's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing story, Frankie. I think that it's admirable. Um, how you've been able to make the best out of the situations. And like you said, sometimes the globe is shaken, yeah. is shaken and then you have to uh, make the best. You make the best. And when you hear people say w another thing, uh, there are negatives to it too. I had to listen to uh, walk into a room where a lot of people talk and then it would go quiet when I walked in. So you know that they, they were, they're in awe of what happened and how I got out of it. But I was listening to things like, oh, here's the walking dead. Oh, wow. Here's the guy who's not supposed to be here. You know, those things, they really bothered me. They got to me. Um, I didn't want to be viewed as a science project. So it, has, it had its positives and its negatives. But since I'm in the hole, I don't want to decorate the hole. I want to get out of the hole. Of course. So I wasn't going to sit there and stew in self-pity and because the world evolves, it still goes on. Yeah. Whether you're in it or not. So you decide, am I staying here or am I going to evolve with the world? And uh, it's, it's that attitude that got me out of a lot of horrible situations. Yeah because you, you try to be smarter than your problem and you're gonna get out of it. Somehow, some way, you have no choice. You don't 
excuse me, you don't put yourself in a position, you don't give yourself that choice. Right. You're going to get out of it or else. And that's what I was able to do was take a lousy situation and flip it around and take advantage of resources because my God, are there resources in Western Mass yeah. to the people who are vigilant, if you're paying attention, right. if you're asking questions. Not I'm still true. in tourist mode. I've been here, <laughs> what, three years, four years. And I was getting on the bus for no reason to go to the mall just to look at people on the bus. I actually drew somebody on the bus. They would have probably, if they caught me. <laughs> but um, looking at the dynamics of things, yeah. you know, the trip, enjoy the trip to get there, to your destination. We're so quick to do things in a hurry and I have to do this, I have to do that, that you kind of, you're not living life. Sort of like you're living for tomorrow. Tomorrow never arrives. Right. Because when it does, it's today. It's not tomorrow. <laughs> so you're constantly in search of, and you turn happiness into a moving target. Kind of like kick the can yeah. with happiness. And um, I learned after the brain injury, after heart surgery, after stroke, after my seizures, Okay, I'm obviously not going to be taken out by this. So I have to make the most of and work around it. Right. You know, if, it's, if that's an obstacle, you walk around it, walk over it. Yeah. You're currently also, uh, you continue to be active. You're currently working with, uh, I've seen a lot of coordination with the Hispanic American Library. And, yes. and you're also working on a mural in Westfield. Tell us about those current projects that you're working on. I'm, I'm very excited with the Hispanic American Library. I was given the pilot, I'm a pilot or the- you're Piloting a program. Uh, yes. There. Nice. Um, and the engine, the keys to this new car. And I'm working with children, with kids and teaching them art. Nice. So that's, it's a dream job. And this is another example of a bad situation with um, you have your, what I was doing my whole career, and well, I can't do that anymore, but I can do this. Right. And I can work with kids, but now I can do it with art. So I, there, I teach on Saturdays, and what I want to teach is creative art creative let these kids i'll guide them but they're creating they're the geniuses the ones that are less than five years old they don't have the influences of their parents and learning this is how i grew up this is how i'm gonna raise you they create on their own so i'm excited to have that opportunity the class is getting bigger Nice. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Westfield, Westfield is an awesome project. I started that last year, and it's in BIC, um, Brain Injury Community Center. And um, it's a gigantic wall. That's another situation where I started the mural for the brain injury people mm -hmm. and in the, for in the, the clients, facility, yeah. the facility. And um, what happened there? I had to go to a funeral in Puerto Rico. I broke my leg, so I can't climb the ladder and those sorts of things. Uh, a lot of things happen along the way. You can propose, a, you can have an idea, but quickly God would, would just shake it up and say, well, no, you're not doing this. There's a, there's a saying in Spanish that say, uno propone y Dios dispone. Yes, <laughs> man proposes, God disposes. Yeah. And how true is that? Because I had a target date with the Westfield mural. And that didn't get reached because 
of a, my broken uh, situations leg. that happen. Yeah. And the way I see it, I view life like a trip to California, to the other side of the country. And right now I'm in the Midwest, <laughs> halfway. <laughs> you'll be, you'll get there. Yeah. You'll and, get um, there. but the point, the reason for that comparison is I, I'm looking at states along the way. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying the trip there. Right. Not just quickly trying to get to this state. I'm enjoying the trip there, nice. the experiences and just the experiences that you get along the way. Maybe you get a flat tire, you, you run out of gas, you're stuck in the desert, you know, things that you can talk about. That, that's that's an amazing uh, way to view life. It's so optimistic. And I think that many of us artists and many of us can learn from you uh, and learn from your journey. So I would encourage our community out there to follow Frankie Borrero in social media. Where can people find you, Frankie? I'm Viejo San Juan, old San Juan. Viejo but San Juan? Name, Viejo San Juan 71. We'll have that on our lower third for people to follow yeah. you. And how can people reach you, uh, email? How can people contact you for the classes at the Hispanic American Library? If someone wanted a mural and wanted to contact you, how can they reach out? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the information for the Hispanic American Library as well. That is a good question. Well. At least people can follow you on the Viejo San Juan account. Yes. And if you want to reach out to Frankie and have a message for him or ask him about his classes, please make sure you do. I think that this is a great inspiration for all of us artists in the Western Mass region. Yes. And um, he is extremely talented in his work, as you can see. I personally admire Frankie for many reasons, not just uh, for being an artist uh, and, and Boy, do I love artists, uh, but I admire him for so much more, for his resilience. I admire him for his optimism, for his energy, uh, for never giving up, for being an example uh, to many of us. And I think that that uh, puts him at a top tier of, of, of those that I uh, look up to. So I want to thank you, Frankie, for being you. in the show. Thank you. you are definitely welcome at Spotlight on the Arts anytime you want. Um, and I hope that we can uh, work on a collaborative project in the near future sometime. Sounds great. Right? So thank you once again for being in the show. Yeah. Uh, and for you, our audience, I hope that you have enjoyed the interview with Frankie Borrero. Make sure that you follow him. And um, I will see you next time. <laughs>